God, this is so heavy. All right, quickly, before I show you how to print while pooping, I gotta talk to you about big old Betty here. I built this enclosure when we moved in here last year. It's got like 36 inches cubed on the top half and the bottom half, and both are fully sealed for negative pressure, which means all the chemicals brewing inside, they go in the air, get put outside where the turtles can breathe it and not inside where you will die. To be honest, I've got no complaints. It's just, it's missing a little bit of the sauce, you know, a little bit of the pasta. So the lighting inside is absolutely terrible. Can't see absolutely anything, but extra points for RGB, I guess. The door itself, half inch acrylic, you know how heavy this thing is? Even for a big guy like me, you can work out here like you're going to the gym. And then every time you want to go inside and get something, you got this thing pushing you in here. Then we got the problem of the SD card slot. It's all the way on the back of the printer. Now we got like two feet to get in there. We got this big 30 pound door pushing you inside while you're trying to reach. And then you can't see the hole. So you're just constantly tapping, tapping, tapping until you hit that jackpot and go right into the slot. Oh, then you got to make a change. You got to go and find that slot. You got to pull it out. You got to put it in your computer and then you got to go in round two and try and win the jackpot again. It's not very fun. All right, so we talked about our problems, and here is our delicious platter of solutions. We got a bunch of these LED pot lights. I think I got like 16 of them outside my neighbor was throwing out his trash. These are worth like $10 each, so big score. We got them connected to these 360 hinges where they can just move around and be pointed in different places, and it's all going to be wired up in sets of grids. Then the printer has four fans in different dedicated spots that are all pushing air into the printer and outside where it's not going to be breathed in by me and my dog who sit and work in here 10 hours a day. And then everything is going to be connected to this massive control panel I got here that I made myself. It can track how much power is in the printer and in the setup. It's going to track the humidity and all those things of the air, the temperature of the room, so I can constantly monitor and control the temperature of the printer inside. It's got the sets of grids of lights, it's got the sets of fans, it's got even the Raspberry Pi on a switch. Everything is going to be controlled from the outside, so I don't have to constantly open the printer and just like an oven, let all the hot air out and then it has to reset the temperature of the room and the printer, the print can fuck up. Like, this is the solution right here. Outside, Flick a switch, done. I also made it on the back here that everything is super simple and plug and play. So you just flick one of these little switches, you slide a cable in and you lock them down. At the starting of this video, I brought in that box right there. And that, and that, and that, and that. Why you may ask is because I decided for some reason I needed another printer. That's a resin printer and that's one of those curing and washing machines. Actually says it right there. Here's a couple things I've been printing with it. They look really cool. Some of these are transparent or react to light. This one came out terribly. You can just see there's like a hole in it if it focuses. And here's a cool play button I, I made. Another one. See through with bubbles. Anyways, in the last two weeks of working with this while printing all the parts for the project I've been showing you earlier, I've been working with these chemicals here. These are chemicals ranging from PLA to ABS and certain things that you can breathe in, certain things that you can't, they'll make your eye itch, whatever. It's chemicals and it's not good to have around you. Opening up the door and opening up the window behind here helps a little bit, but it, now it's winter, it's snowing outside, and you just can't do that all the time. Earlier in the video, I did show you guys all the parts I printed and all the lights and all that, but I ended up setting up most of it without recording it just because of how much work and how much time it took. So here's just a little example. You see all these are plug and played. All these are connected to different routes and whatever, and we'll go over those right now. Let me just connect this to the board. Okay, well, I got it propped up here. It's gonna flicker a bit hard, but whatever. Here's our master switch, this one. Yeah, this is our master switch here. This is our rows of fans, so one, two, and three. Then we got under here our lights, so we got our first grid, which is the auxiliary grid, so all the tools, all the rolls get this side lit up. As you can see, there's three of them up there. There's one, two, and three. Looks like two is already burnt. Then we got the last row here, which is our main grid, which lights up the whole printer so well. Now there's gonna be certain areas like right here, right there that aren't lit up. So I built these little auxiliary lights that you can set up on a base and then you can flex it in any direction you want. And those will go on another 
uh, row of switches. Then on top of that, on the auxiliary row, we're gonna have the Raspberry Pis, and then an Arduino, which are gonna control the temperature inside the case. So we're gonna have a little heater and a cooler inside here that can shift back and forth. It's gonna be a whole project that we're working on. And then we're also gonna have Raspberry Pis that are going to control the printers and automate them so I can print from anywhere in the world. As long as the printer is set up, I just press a button on my phone and it prints. Also, there's some gauges here. This one's telling us how much power is being pushed through. And then we have 27% humidity, which it's getting lower. I keep adding like silica gels and finding different ways to lower it. And it's at 24 degrees, which is perfect for me because I always have my printer at around 23, 24 uh, for the ambient temperature inside the case which as you can see is very large. It's sealed all around. So there's foam and like a, like a silicone type glue all the way around. That's all I got for now, pretty much. I didn't get too much footage, unfortunately, of me building this whole thing just because I'm working alone and it's just a lot of work to build it on my own. I got a lot of pictures and stuff that I update in the Discord. So I'll put a link below with a bunch of other 3D printing people and you guys could come and show your builds, come ask questions or come help us figure out solutions like can we build a heater and a cooler for a 3D printing enclosure and have it constantly keep the temperature consistent? Things like that. So join the Discord and let us know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like maybe. Subscribe to the channel, help me out. I don't really ask for money, I don't have a Patreon and all that, but people subscribing helps a lot. And go check out, go check out the shorts we've been posting. I think we have like four of them right now of past projects that you might have never seen. You got like 40 second videos you can watch and they'll tell you all about the project and you can still enjoy the entertainment side of it. Bye.